The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner professional and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, helping you win in your retirement, here's Brian Akers. Hello, I'm Brian Akers, and today I have with me certified financial planner Alex Monk. Um, both of us work for Acres Financial Group. Uh, we are certified financial pra- planner practitioners. Alex has been working with, with me for 10 years. Good morning, Alex. Brian, it's great to see you. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, today is a, a show that we're putting together because of everything that's been going on. Um, the show is going to be called Know Your Purpose for Investing. And the reason we wanted to do this is this. What is going on right now causes many people to worry about their money. We put together the show today to talk about why do you invest? What is the purpose behind your investing? When you know your purpose for investing, you can then handle the volatility of the market. What do you think there, Alex? I mean, that's perfect, right? So if you know why you're investing money, then you can actually judge your performance against that goal or whatever you're trying to accomplish. And, you know, investing doesn't happen overnight. I know during COVID, all that stuff, meme stocks, people were getting rich overnight. That's not normal. Absolutely. It's not how it works. Well, usually what happens is exactly what happens is extreme volatility. Extreme volatility was already in the market starting in January. Most of the down that we've seen in in the year 2022 has been market related to inflation and gas, the gas prices and the fear of higher interest rates and things like that. That has been what's driving the market. Now, the war um, with Russia um, attacking uh, Ukraine, that is something to think about and to make sure you know your portfolio is balanced to be able to handle events that we have no control over. It's very, very important to know what's in the reason behind why you're investing. Yeah, so if you're long-term, right, if it's for the rest of your life, you might have 30, 40, 50-year time horizon. So... A, a 5, 10, 15% correction off the top is not a signal to go to cash. In reality, almost every year, pretty much every year, the average has been about 14.6% down from top to bottom. It's a normal volatility range. And that's what they call normal in market volatility. Yeah, so if you start out the year at all-time highs, guess what? <laughs> yeah, you might see some down. So what happens is this, is that when you're thinking about your money and you, you worry, um, people are looking at their statement. It might be the first time it's down in two or three years. And they're like, oh, what's going on here? I, I lost some, all kinds of money. Um, my thing is this. Well, did you lose? And did you lose some of the gain? What's, what's going on? Is it more than the market's gone down? Or is it a lot less than the market? You need to know what's going on there. And, you know, when you first see a, a loss, right, your brain reacts differently. When you see a win, you're not like, Oh, I need to call this guy and say, "Hey, we made money." Yeah, that's call, just, hey, thanks, thanks. I know I'm up ten percent the last quarter. That's awesome. Never seen that before. I didn't get those calls. You don't get those calls, <laughs> um, but you get the calls when it goes down, and it's that fear, just like we were talking about, and fear, uncertainty. They all drive volatility, and volatility in the market, especially. You got to think about what we're going through, Brian. They're lifting restrictions. We're allowed to travel. There's a lot of things changing. And a lot of things that people want to do and things that they're going to do differently, right? So we're in person. I can see you. I can touch you. Like, that's different than it was two years ago. Absolutely. Things have been changing. Um, The price of gas is something that really affects people every day in their real pocket because you go to that pump, what was 40 bucks is now 70 bucks. What was 70 is now 110. Oh, <laughs> um, man. You know, just crazy when you think about your, the, the vehicle choice you have and the gas, the, the, the gas price. That's just one piece of this. I mean, my neighbor just like a week ago was like, I got to stop driving my truck around. Yeah. And he doesn't really have that big of a commute. But if you're on a budget and your gas money doubles, that is a huge deal. It absolutely, absolutely is. It also affects everything else. Especially the food and other um, things have gone up tremendously high, right? And, and I don't want to say this uh, to be punny, but uh, fuel cost is baked into everything. Yeah. Like everything we touch. Plastic is from fossil fuels. Yeah. The plastic has to get here on a truck. Right. It's not an electric truck yet. I don't care what they say on TV. Yeah, they're hoping. <laughs> That's not there, right? I mean, 
Amazon stops at your house every day. How does it get there? Gas. Yeah. Well, it does affect gas. We still use it. Um, the prices are affected by um, many of the decisions um, that, that the government has had. But then most recently, the the idea of the oil with Russia and how it affects um, purchasing foreign oil is greatly affecting the economy. Um, we really didn't want to make this an economic show too much. What we wanted to do is think about your money and what are you investing and why are you investing? And what happens is this. I think back to other volatile times in my career. Yes, I've been around um, financial services since 1987. You do not look that old. 1987. <laughs> and one of the things was I started in August that year of 87. By October, there was a, a Monday, a black Monday, lost um, over 20-some percent, 26 percent, I think the number was, that day, in one day. 26% in one day. So to see a 3 or 4% move and people that be feel panicky, I'm like, oh, that 87 was the first thing I saw. <laughs> and that was a volatile down in 87. And that's before they had circuit breakers or anything like that. And so now they, they soften it down by all the circuit breakers and other techniques trying to keep the market from um, just snowballing straight, straight down when things are terrible. When you think back on events in life that change your career, 9-11 was that for me. 9-11, that, that September 11th, we um, had things we could not control. Um, the terrorists attacked New York and D.C. They attacked America. We couldn't control that. And I really felt that I needed to have a portfolio designed for my retirees where when things we cannot control happen, our money is still okay. And that became a big deal. So right after that, the markets dropped tremendously on that, when they reopened that Monday, stocks and bonds went down. Yes, I always did portfolio stocks, bonds, and cash. I did not use fixed annuities until after 9-11. After 9-11, after what happened was, what was protected since 1800s, what made through the depression, what made it through on volatile times, have been the insurance company guarantees on the fixed side. And that was something that I added into the portfolio mix as a bond replacement, something I've been doing for about 20, 20 years now. You know, and, and it really makes sense in today's interest rate environment, because where are you going to go for yield? Right. And you're not getting in the bank. I mean, when you started, what were interest rates? 8% in the CD? Yeah, or higher. <laughs> <laughs> My first mortgage was 10 and a half. So I mean, people would go crazy. Like if yeah. we, if our whole show today was about a CD that pays 8%, we would never be able to answer the calls. Yeah, it'd be so many people calling in. The, the hard part is this, is that I had the mindset in a volatile time, we need a portion of our portfolio to never lose, to be protected from the downside. And that's why I went out and found different types of investments to offset. That does not mean we don't have money in the market. That means we absolutely have money in the market. And in times like this and the volatility, we look at ways to buy more if the allocation isn't correct. So the volatility that we're looking at, the pressures, the information that's out there, the actions by a foreign country um, on Ukraine, these are events that we can't control, but we can control our purpose, how we invest, and how we think about the investments that we have. And you know, my favorite part about the way that we set up portfolios is we don't have correlation to just the market. But so what that means is when something like this happens, we can go to our fixed index annuities and not have things that have gone down. Especially if somebody needs money, they call uh, this event or that kind of thing, right? Right. They're, they're, people are going to need money, right? Yep. That's what the money's for. It's for you to spend, for you to live your life. But we can't control these things. So we ha we know that going into it, right? Everyone has the same set of information. So we know the market's going to go up and down. Mm -hmm. Some would say 14% and change a year. Yeah. Um, so we got to have places where we're not going to have that volatility. And we achieve that through diversification in different asset classes. We also believe in thinking about active management versus just buying an index. I know that's going to offend many people that listen because they were able to buy an index over the last 10 years and do fine. I asked them, do you know what happened in 2000, 2010 with the S&P index? And they said, uh, I don't know. Do they remember when the S&P was negative for 10 years? 
negative for 10 years. Yes, the S&P index was negative for a 10-year period. That 10-year period would mean zero negative, I mean, zero growth in that index. If you bought it at the beginning, held it for 10, at the end, you're set with zero. <laughs> it's and, not been the case recently, but it, but it's But that becomes thing. most people's only investment they have in their retirement plan. If you're in a federal government, that, that's the, the, the C plan, right? C, and then you might get a little S, a little I. Uh, the small and international, but the, most people have it in C. People have it in the Vanguard 500. It's the largest of fun out there. Well, Brian, it's cheap. It is cheap. Um, the problem is I believe you get what you pay for. It's done tremendously well in an up market. In a volatile sideways market, things could be like this for a while. Uh, we need to buy and diversify and have active management on your money to make sure your money can last a lifetime. You know, and the biggest thing about that is being opportunistic. Now, I, I, war is never a good thing, right? I don't want to no. see people die, but we need to have moves that we can make when events happen that we know are going to happen. We just don't know when. So like you said, asset allocation is the number one priority. So when things are not going the way you want, when things seem overwhelming, when there's events that you can't control, you need to look at your portfolio and take a look at it and say, well, what is my purpose for my money? What I want my money to do? Is it doing that? Am I properly allocated? Or did I get carried away and have 100% in stocks or in one stock? Or is it in something that's very volatile and I have all, all your money that way? You need to take a look at where you are so that this money can last your lifetime. You need to be careful what you're doing and understand that you control your own future through how you invest and the purpose you put behind it. And when should you do this? I think the answer is yesterday, but today we're more open. <laughs> Yesterday's already happened, right? Yesterday's gone. So the second you realize your asset allocation is wrong. And that's when you should fix it. That's when you Up should market, it. down market, whenever it's wrong, you should fix it. When it's right, you got to stick with it. Now, at Acres Financial Group, we are a local. We're independent. We don't report to a big company on Wall Street or a big insurance company in Iowa. We report to you. We do have offices in Farstow and Lutherville, Maryland, and we do have clients all around the country and even some all around the world. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. All you have to do is give us a call for a free consultation with one of our team of advisors. Go ahead and give us a call at 833 833- when retire. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We will call you back on Monday to schedule your free in-person meeting, Zoom, or a phone meeting, whichever is convenient for you. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or you can visit us on that website. You can check us out on our, our scheduled meeting time there. Also, you can give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning your for your retirement. Cash is king. We will explain the role of cash in the second quarter. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Well, the announcer just welcomed you back, and I'm going to welcome you back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers, and here with me today is Alex Monk. We're both certified financial planner practitioners at Akers Financial Group. Right here in Maryland. But we work with people all over the United States and a few around the world. All right, Alex, I got this question here for the second quarter. It starts out like this. Cash is king. What does that mean? Oh, man. So <laughs> cash is one of those weird things, right? You, you have to have it. We recently have been hearing about inflation. So people are saying, oh, my cash is losing its purchasing power. And that's well and good. But you got to have cash to pay your bills today. Absolutely. You can't not. And then this volatility that we're seeing just proves that if you don't have cash, you should have had it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So our show today is called Know Your Purpose for Investing. Know what you're trying to accomplish with how you invest your money. In building that investment objective, that investment portfolio, one of the key ingredients is having an emergency fund. Emergency fund for your business, emergency fund for you but also having your short and medium term goals covered with cash. If you have transition in life, moving, um, downsizing, um, changing jobs, retirement, I think the answer that I say is cash is king. In other words, don't be anxious to go invest it. Don't be anxious to, to get your money put to work too quickly. Let's work this out so, so we know your cash flow and what do you need your portfolio to give you. 
Right. And, and I would always rather go into one of those transitions with more cash than I think I need. Right. Because I don't want people to worry. Right. Because uh, people do. I mean, the market changes like this. It's volatile. People get a little squirrely. Yeah. And, and it's understandable. But if you know that you have six months, 12 months, 18 months in some cases in cash for your short term needs, you don't have to worry about this. Right. So if we get a phone call from an existing, existing client and says, oh, I'm concerned about the market. What we do is we say, all right, let's have, a, let's have a meeting. So we get our numbers together and we talk to them about a couple of things. One is, is our plan fully in place? And then we remind them of their plan where we have set aside money. You paid off all your debts. You have your income getting ready to start. Let's say one client's getting ready to retire next year and they're concerned about the investments. We've already uh, reallocated the, the portfolio to the proper allocation, but we allocated the right amount to cash and we know the income coming. The volatility is something that was just in a normal portfolio design is going to have some negative years. Right. And, you know, our goal is not to take all the risk of the market. Guess what that means? We don't take all the risk of the market. <laughs> so we're not down as much as the market. Right. So like if the market's down 10, our portfolio might be down four or five, depending on the age of the client and the risk level that they take. The younger the client is, the higher risk we take with them. Now they will be down the whole market or even more if they were leaning more heavily on the technology side. Yeah. And it's so... We're, we're going through transitions as a country. We're going through geopolitical issues. There's a lot of different stuff happening right now. Yep. This is going to happen again in the future. And it's happened in the past. One of the weirdest things, if you think back to 2007, 2008, 2009, that was like the last major event when the markets lost trust and it went down about 68%. That market movement wasn't a geopolitical move. It was a fundamental problem with the mortgage-backed securities and the banking system and how that was handled and what was thought to be guaranteed was not guaranteed. Yeah, and it turned out to be a geopolitical issue stemming from that because we had foreign sovereigns that owned some of this debt. You know, it was, it was a waterfall effect. Right, because after, so after the fact, what happened is people owned the debt. Lots of people invested their money in it. Um, thankfully, the CMO market was not something that we put money into because we, like I was saying earlier, we want our money to be absolutely protected on the safe side, on the, on the low risk side. In other words, we're not in the bonds or that would create that. So the reason I'm, the reason I'm bringing up the 08, 09 downturns is the fact that for some people, that was the last downturn. But for many people, they have not experienced a downturn in the market. They believe that, oh, you just buy an index and just hold on tight. You'll make 10, 15% a year. Oh, I can retire. I can live off 8%. I can, I'll make 10 to 15. It's just rosy. I mean, those numbers, I, w I wouldn't sleep at night if that's what I thought was going to happen. Absolutely. I love seeing returns like that. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> It's nice to have money go grow at that rate, but you also know that it will not grow like that forever. No, and it can't. Like historically, if we look at the returns of the market, no matter how you boil it down, if you look at a long enough time period, you're going to average somewhere in the six to eight. Yeah, six to eight, and uh, depending on, on your split between stocks and bonds or stocks and fixed, if you go 100% stock, you're at that eight to 12 um, over time, but you will have the volatility of uh, up 2030 and down 2030. That does happen. Your money can lose. The harder part about losing is you got to make it back up, and that's harder to do, right? I mean, you got to make back more than you lost. Right. So if you lose 10%, you got to make 11% just to get back to where you were the year before. And let's just say you need money mm -hmm. in that, let's call it 4% range. Right. So what he's bringing up is this this segment, the second quarter, we're talking about cash is king. If you think you need money and we're in a market that's down 10% and your money is invested wrongly, you need to make the change. You need to sell certain portions of it to build your cash to what you need. We try to be a year ahead for our, our income clients to have enough money set aside. We want dividends and interest flowing in. We don't want to have to sell the market if it would drop another 10%. We want to be able to have our cash sitting there ready for retirement income. You know what else that reminds me of is find out how your monthly checks are getting to you if you're already retired. Yeah. Are they selling every month? 
Oh, you mean on a on a brokerage statement from yeah, a stock broker? Oh, absolutely. It's amazing how that happens. They uh, what they'll do is they'll actually sell a little piece of the whole market every every month to send you your monthly check, and so your check is volatile. And what? Not volatile. It's volatile in the fact that you're selling the market at downs and you're actually basically locking in the losses, which we think is a fundamental mistake in how you distribute money for retirement. Now, in cash, you want to have cash. Cash doesn't make anything, but we still think you got to put it there. You need to understand it's it's just part of the way things are at the moment. Now, some people know their short-term and medium-term goals. They know in the next year they need money for a new kitchen, a new roof. Um, their uh, uh, water heater might break up. They, they need to have their emergency fund plus some extra money. Now, there's also a concept called dry powder. What is your um, thoughts on the word dry powder? Oh, it reminds me of the back side of Vail around Easter time. No, dry powder is money that can go in the market. Okay. Fresh cash. Okay. That cash is king. So you can't, if, if you're fully invested, yeah. how can you buy low? Well, you can't unless you're selling something and you have to sell something that happens to be high while everything else is low and that's hard to find. Well, if you have proper asset allocation, you might have some gold or you might have some commodities. Mm-hmm. And that would be something that, I know we're, we're not trying to predict the future here because that would be a fool's errand, but we are trying to have the right amount of money in certain places yep. so that no matter what happens, we can be opportunistic. Like gold is going to rise in a, in a yeah. scary environment. It does rise and it has risen the last two weeks, um, especially with um, everything that's going over and where Russia has come into Ukraine. Now, Ukraine is is. It's fighting for their country. Um, they're taking care of their families. There's a lot of things going on there. It has affected oil prices here in America. And the sad part about a lot of, of wartime markets is the market does go down early, and then it starts to work itself back up. If you look at war, World War II, um, 39, 40, and 41, while things were going wrong before America entered the war, uh, those were three negative years in a row for the stock market. And as America entered the war, the government spending on the war actually helped the economy and helped people to uh, help the economy to start growing out of it and the stock market to help start rising, raising again. So, you know, and that's another thing. It's like, how terrible does the event have to be for us as a, a country to come back together and work towards that goal? And it just fits perfectly for our topic. Absolutely. Um, one of the things about thinking backwards of that 08 or 09 downturn, the market was um, very low. It was 69, 6,800, I think, in, in March 12th of that year of 2009. And then it went up back up to 14,000. It took from 09 until 2013 for the market to come back. It took the NASDAQ even longer to come back from its downturns. NASDAQ had a real, all, real all-time high back at the end of the 90s when you had the, the, the bubble. Yeah, the 2000. Yeah, the tech bubble. It's, it really, that sort of ended by, by 2001, I mean, even before 9-11 occurred. That tech bubble caused the NASDAQ to go from 5,000 down in the low 2,000 range. It took 15 years plus to come back. Now, the, the NASDAQ is extremely high compared to then. And it, now it's extremely high, and people think it's going to grow forever. The reality is that over the last nine months, you've seen some tech funds down 40%, 50% because they got um, overvalued, overvalued. Well, and <laughs> we were in a different environment then, right? So Zoom was having huge profits because no one was in their office. Yeah. Well, if you change the narrative, and now people are in their office, they may not be on Zoom as much. Uh, but Zoom is still a product that you pay a monthly fee for. The amount of money you pay on it does it doesn't change, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that's because you are actually investing your money. You are just there for people when it comes to your investment life. What I mean by investment life, your portfolio has to be designed for you, not for the stockbroker or for the product. You have to design. One part of it is building cash first. That cash is king piece is what do you need? What's going on in your life? Are you planning on buying a house, building a house, moving? Um, do you have a large event in your life? You got to have the cash aside. You might have to sell with the market down. And that's not a fun thing to do. That's called locking in those losses, Brian. And I absolutely hate that. 
But in reality is that the, the market could easily drop further because of the, and not craziness, but just the volatility of all that's going on. And what we need to do is make sure we have our, our plan in place to know that this money will last a lifetime. We want you to think about retirement this way, where the best part of retirement is getting your time back. You decide how to use it. Before retirement, your time is tied up with other commitments, you know, mainly your job. A lot of that goes away at retirement. Your time is now consumed by things that you want to do. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. All you need to do is go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll down to the schedule a meeting section and let us know that you'd like to schedule your free consultation with one of our team of advisors. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or you can go ahead and give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We will call you back on Monday to schedule your free in-person Zoom or phone meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or go ahead and give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Are you making investment mistakes right now? We'll talk about it in the third quarter. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. I'm Brian Akers, and here with me today is Alex Monk. And welcome back to Winning in Retirement, um, brought to you by Akers Financial Group. We are certified financial planner practitioners, and we enjoy working and advising our clients. And we thank you for listening to our show. Alex, so... This is the second half of the show. Oh, yeah. Um, hopefully, halftime was good for us both, that we were refreshed and ready to go strong here in the second half. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling real good. Now, because this show show is relatively live, you know, it's March. March Madness getting ready to start. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of my favorite times of year. Halftime, you got to give the speech of a lifetime because it could be your last game. Um, so how would you do a show differently? This was the last show. Wow. I would tell people, hey think about what you're doing and try to take the emotion out of it. That's the biggest mistake I see. It's emotion. It's emotion and it's listening to people you shouldn't listen to, right? I know you've had some of those here recently and they are brutal examples. Absolutely. And so what we're going to do this quarter, this, this third quarter of our show is the following. The show is called Know Your Purpose for Investing, but this one is called Are You Making Investment Mistakes Right Now? And when we do this quarter, this talk, we're not trying to talk down to you about problems. We're trying to give examples of how we're trying to work through the problems. Understand that many times it's our thinking that needs to change. Then we need to make action that ties into your whole plan. The problem is most people don't look at their whole plan unless they have a financial advisor to do that. And many people are trying to do it themselves. They don't really have a financial advisor um, to be there to help them understand the good thoughts and bad thoughts when it comes to their investing. Yeah, and the human mind is a crazy place to be, right? Uh, it can convince you of just about anything. Depending on what you're reading, what you're, um, what you're watching, uh, where you're spending all your time, you could be overwhelmed by something. Right. And then you, you get fear of missing out if there's people that, you know, that sit next to you at work that are like, oh, I made so much money on blah, blah, blah. So now you're like, oh, I got to catch up. Especially with people getting back together. They're having parties, talking. Oh, yeah, I made so much money. They, all you got to do when someone says they made a lot of money, say, well, how did, did you ever lose trading? And see what they say. And if the answer is no, you can go ahead and run the other way. <laughs> but understand that no one's going to know your full financial situation. We call it your financial fingerprint. Unless they're the, your financial advisor. I mean, hopefully you've seen it all put together. The, the more you can look at your whole your whole the whole portfolio, your thoughts, your goals, bring it all together. When you know that and you write it down, then you can make strong decisions and understand that volatility in the short run doesn't change your plans, doesn't change your goals because you're looking at the long term, not going up and down with the short term. And you need to play the long game. That's the way to do it. Because if you're not planning ahead a couple of years, you may miss huge opportunities. Absolutely. So when you have the emotion of selling, what should the reality be? You should be buying. Hopefully you've already got that cash ready. 
Right. Now, that's not in every market, not in every movement. We might tell you, uh, be cautious with a war j- just getting going and starting. We don't know where it's going to end. We know volatility is going to be the name of the game over the next few months, maybe the rest of this year. Well, I mean, just look at what can happen over such a short period of time. I mean, you could the market could close on a Friday, and you could have so much happen Saturday and Sunday. Absolutely. Just I mean, things that we can't even think of. Back in um, September of 2008, um, there was companies that shut down over overnight, um, mainly over the weekend. <laughs> so the you know, regulators came in, they were shut down by Monday. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So you got to be careful. You got to make the decisions based on what fits not only your risk profile, but what you're trying to do with this money. Right. So this segment is called, Are You Making Investment Mistakes Right Now? Let's talk about some of those mistakes. We're going to be going back and forth on different types of mistakes people are doing right now. So, you know, the biggest one is to think, you know, put your losses in perspective, right? And you need to look at everything to do that. And I think just, just this morning we had someone come in through the front door. And yeah. They were like, well, I've, I've lost $12,000. Yeah. Well, that, that could be a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, my question to them was <laughs> how much money is in the account? Right. And then they said like 310000 and so I did quick math, and I said, that's like a 3%, yes. 3% down. And I said the market, um, as of the, the day I spoke to this person, was probably down around 10. And so only being down 3 is actually a good return in a volatile market, having your diversification actually work. It proves that it's working. <laughs> so that's such a weird statement, right? It's like when you want, when zero is hero, or like when a less of a, lo- a lower loss is better, mm-hmm. That's going to be the case in some markets, and it's going to be that way forever. Yep. Um, the, the reality is this, is well, how much money did you make last year when the market went up? Like, and they don't know the answer to that, but they know they lost 12000 like, on this statement as of today. Uh, what I try to explain is, well, last year, you're probably up 10 to 12%, and then that was a lot of money. Yeah. And when you, you talk 10% on 300000 how much money is that? It's somewhere around 30000 Yeah, so to lose part of that gain is a normal volatility. Now, this year is not normal. There is more noise going on. Um, the, the Russian um, um, fighting into Ukraine is something that's not normal. How we're trying to handle it and fight it on the geopolitical risk is high right now. So diversification, um, some of it's working very well with commodities and um, with um, gold. But when you look at international investing, they got hit very hard, more than the United States did. Yeah, and it, it was it was interesting because going into this period of time, you know, the buzz on the street was, well, international stocks have lower price-to-earnings ratio, a lot of unlocked value there. But you know what? <laughs> if someone's invading a country in that area, it's going to mess everything up. Right. And so do we run out and buy right now or do we um, get ready to buy? I think you get ready to buy. One of the things that's going on is this, is you don't want to stop your stock market investings when the market gets volatile. You actually want the market down. So don't make the mistake of going on your 401k website and having your contributions go to cash. You want it to go into the market while the market's down. Do not make the mistake of changing where contrib- changing where contributions are going. Right. And, and- you know, you hear all this talk, oh, dollar cost averaging into the market is the way you want to do it. And that's true. And you take advantage of that volatility. Yep. On the way out, it's different. And that's another big mistake we see. You got to do it in chunks. You're yep. not going to pick the top. You're not going to pick the bottom, hopefully. You just pick the time you're thinking about it and reviewing it and say, am I allocated wrong? Should I fix it? And the answer is yes, let's do it today. Okay. And then it's like, okay, where do we need to make the changes? Sure. That's where we're going to pull our cash from. Or if you're properly allocated. Easy for you to say. (laughs) If you're properly allocated, well, then you'll have places to pull cash from when things are bad. Absolutely. Very important to have some cash when you're building your portfolios. Um, You need cash for living, cash for short-term events, cash for emergencies, and then... um, in any portfolio, you want to have some cash for to be able to go ahead and buy when there is a, a big downturn. Right now in the market, the way things are going, it's not a, a huge downturn yet. We believe the market has probably more room to go on, on the downside. That's something where you really need to have a plan to your future so you know what you're doing. 
some of the things that we've seen, the mistakes that we've seen, one of them is stop investing. One is moving from stocks to bonds. You're buying bonds. Interest rates have actually gone down in the short run here. That means bond values have gone up, and now you're buying them at a high, and you're going to get ready to lose on that money by shifting from stocks to bonds. But it was safer. It, it said it was lower risk profile on the internet. Brian. It went up last week, so I should buy that. Uh, my answer is let's look at a portfolio a little differently. If you're going to a grocery store and over here is a flag wave up 10%, you pay 10% more or one that says 30% off, which one would you buy if it's the same? It depends on who's got more people around it. And most likely, if it's a grocery store, you buy the discount one. But in the stock market, you buy the one waving them up 10%. Yep. And a lot of times, <laughs> so the market's going to move in, in various parts in various different directions. But you need to understand why what you're buying is up. Absolutely. Now, the other thing is this. In portfolio design, the client needs to invest based on their parameters, not anybody else in the family. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen um, clients where have kids that get more involved in, in, in their portfolios as the client gets older. And one of the biggest mistakes we've seen is the kids investing um, mom and dad's money based on their own objective. Um, like we, uh, the, the situation I had was we put money out of the stock market to cash to help diversify and get cash as king for the next big event in life. Does she move? Does she fix her house up? And, you know, life like that. And then before I know it, um, they bought index funds with it and they're down 7% in the last few months. Um, but the premise is that they're going to be fine. And you know, it's tough because, yes, your son-in-law is a good guy. I get it. You trust him. Treats your daughter well, whatever the situation may be. But what does he do for a living? Yeah. <laughs> well, the hard part is this. Is it's hard to question family members, but it happens is this. is There is a plan done by the planner, and there's a design that you worked out together. And when you go counter to that in causing mistakes, causing losses, it comes to a point where do you still listen to the advice of the planner or not? Or, or is someone else the advisor? And you got to be careful with that and the fact that, a plan that should be properly designed and followed through. And I'm, I'm normally designing for my retirees a conservative answer. Like one, one concept a, a kid was explaining to me in our talk with his mother was, um, oh, I think she should um, mortgage her house, keep her money invested, where she can make 10% every year and then only pay 3 or 4% of the mortgage and she'll be fine. And I'm like... Maybe. This is all of her money she has. She shouldn't be taking risk and borrowing money to do a project. She needs to balance her life out and get enough income to have income for tomorrow. We need to be conservative to know that money will always be there through the good and the bad because they're not always good times. Right. And, you know, the nice part about being fiduciaries is we don't have our agenda in the way like some of these kids do. Well, some are trying to do what's best. They think they can make money, double their money. They can do all these things. The hardest part is when you look at the whole thing about retirement and the risk level they have. I think retirement's about cash flow. Retirement's about conservative approach. It's not return on the money I'm worried about. It's return of the money. It's the cash flow to pay the bills so you don't have to worry about your retirement years. That's exactly what Acres Financial Group is all about. In retirement, your biggest worry should really be about where you're going to drink your morning cup of coffee, not crypto, or where you're going to put your extra cash in the stock market. You need to think about things just like a Saturday is a day free of stress. Retirement every day should be that way because your income and everything's taken care of by a financial advisor. Now, we recommend Acres Financial Group, of course, and it's not too late for you to, to talk to us about your situation where we can help you win in retirement. You can do that by meeting with one of our team of advisors, having a free meeting um, that's about you and your retirement. So go ahead and give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. When we call, oh, actually after you call, we're going to call you. And we'll call you back on Monday to schedule that free in-person or Zoom meeting to talk about your exact situation. So go ahead and give us a call at 833-946-7384 uh, to start planning your retirement right now. You can also go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. When you know the why, we can tell you the how. And of course, we'll talk about that in the fourth quarter. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. 
Hello, I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and today I have with me certified financial planner practitioner Alex Monk. Alex Monk has done the first three quarters, and we're headed into the fourth quarter. Our show today is called Know Your Purpose for Investing. Are you ready for the fourth quarter, Alex? You must finish strong. You must finish strong, Brian. You got to finish strong. Now, if you're behind heading the fourth quarter, sometimes you got to press. What we're going to try to do here is just um, hold the lead, keep keep <laughs> the lead during the fourth quarter. Uh, there's shot clocks. We can't stall too long, but we got to keep it going. Well, that's, you know, that's the thing about what's going on in the market right now, right? People are like, I just want to keep my money. Yeah. And the hard part is you just can't uh, balance a portfolio that gets all the ups and none of the downs. You oh, have to be nice. You want part of the up, you got to have some of the down and you can understand the volatility is, is the part of it. Now, so we put together this show, know your purpose for investing, because when it comes to um, the panicking, the worrying, the thinking about the volatility of things that happen with inflation and gas prices and, and war and things that are going on right now, it causes you to think and rethink and question what you're doing. So we put together this show so that you could hear our thoughts on certain topics. Now, some of these topics are tough to listen to where you need to understand why you're investing your money and understand it's your money to be invested and you need to know your purpose for this. Now, if you've missed any part of the show, you can go to our website. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Acres is A-K-E-R-S financialgroup.com. You go to that website. We do have a radio tab. You can listen to our shows um, this this week, last week, and anything in the last couple of years are there on the website. You can also go to our webinar tab and check out some videos that we put together over the last year and a half. You also can um, check us out at Acres Financial Group. Check out uh, the different advisors we have, all the different CFPs. So Acres Financial Group is built around financial planning, around being someone's financial advisor. This show is built about built on giving information about financial planning and financial advice because it means a lot to us. So when we have volatile times, we want people to actually think about why. So this fourth quarter, it, this is the big question. And Alex, what are your thoughts on the following question? When you know the why, we can tell you the how. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I tell people that all the time, not necessarily in that statement, but I say, look, you need to tell me what you want your life to look like, and I can show you how to get there. But I can't tell you how to spend the money. Like that's that's your money. You you do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you do with it. Just tell me how much you want to spend and on what and when, and we can come up with a plan to get there. All right. So we don't do budget planning where we're going to hound you on spending extra money on a Snickers bar last week. That sounds personal. Well, some people hound me about my Snicker bar purchases, but, but generally the idea of your budget is your budget. If it's not working, we're going to look at it and say, well, where's the money going? So when it comes to portfolio investing and making this all work, knowing why you're investing and what it's for helps you decide the risk tolerance, helps you decide the time horizon, and explains really how to invest your money. Well, let me hit you with this one, Brian. If I need more income, I should take... More or less risk? My answer is less risk when it comes to getting more income, not more risk. Because that means you need the money more. Absolutely. And you can afford to lose it less. You, you really cannot afford to have large losses when you are income dependent on your money that you need it to give everything it can out. Yeah. And, you know, you may have a granddaughter or a son or a daughter that really needs the money. But if you spend all your money... Too quickly. Who's going to take care of you? Um, that's a tough one. One of the things that um, we've had in my career is a few people we've had to write letters to saying that based on your spending and your request for withdrawal, you're going to run out of money in this many years. We don't want to write that letter to people in their retirement. But when we go askew to the income, take more and more, you know, you set up an income that's designed based on certain interest rates and certain withdrawals, and then they, they call for more and more and more money because situation in life happen. They don't have an emergency fund to handle things. What they have to do is use the money that's in the portfolio that's designed to give them income for life. And so what we have to do is change the portfolio design if you keep taking the money out. Yeah, and, you know, it's very difficult to change your lifestyle at 80. Oh, it is. I agree. I mean, that's not something fun. So you got to go in and have some of these good habits that Brian's talking about, like spending within your means. But this also helps with your investments. So if you're investing your money and you have your money allocated, and we believe that's properly allocated, 
we're probably not going to tell you to sell your investments when the market has a 10% downturn. No. Why would we not tell them to sell? Well, because if you're properly allocated, then you have cash. Yep. Then you have some safe money. You have places to pull from. So we don't want to lock in those losses because part of that risk money is a long time horizon. But if the market does go down 10, 15%, we do things called rebalancing. What is rebalancing? So rebalancing is it's in our portfolios that are actively managed. And we, we do a lot of them here in-house. Um, yeah. and, and inside those portfolios, we'll have assets like gold, commodities, things that are up in scenarios like today, those things are high. Mm-hmm. We didn't know there's going to be a, a geopolitical event. But we knew that we need exposure to these asset classes because something may happen. So then when you rebalance, you're buying more of the things that are on sale Mm -hmm. by using profits for things that are no longer on sale. Yeah, it's sort of like you think about portfolio balance and diversification. And when you think about stocks, you only want to buy the one great stock. You don't want to own all the stocks or a portion of stocks. You don't want to diversify into boring stocks. I want to all in on one name. Right. You want to to buy a stock that went up 1,000%. But the problem is, is if you heard it went up 1,000%, the fact is you're late. You missed it. (laughs) I mean, you can't chase returns. It'll never work out. Well, some people do, and they try to trade things. Um, a lot of people are day traders because it's been a great time to trade last last couple of years. Um, I was saying to someone that it hasn't been since the 1990s that the trading was really as um, as good for people to buy because things kept going up. Yeah, and, and then you'd have swings, 20, 30, 40% swings in certain names in one day. Mm-hmm. And I you mean, could buy it again. You could buy it again. You could sell it. You could do all kinds of stuff. That is not normal. It's not normal, and that's something we can't live our, our life on that. We can't retire on that kind of trading. We can't um, have that as part of our portfolio design. So one of the things is this, is that if you were thinking about um, um, selling your investments after the market's down 10%, the question would be is why? Why are you wanting to sell? Do you want to go to cash to make zero? Are you trying to design a new portfolio allocation? Are you just um, panicking for what's going on? And usually the answer is the latter. Because yeah, they heard something. They heard on the news, though, the war scares them when it comes to their money. And they think about the worst case scenario of the different situations. Yeah, and trust me, I go down all those rabbit holes. I want to know every scenario. How does it unwind? What's mm-hmm. the total worst case scenario? So that when people call me, I, I need to know what they're reading. Yep. Like, what, where are you getting your information from? What are you hearing? I, and you don't want your advisor to say... Uh, you know, I never heard of that. Let yeah. me call you back. Well, that's a good answer. Well, I, I had one uh, just the other day where they brought in articles of this um, social media thing they're reading, and it was going into your 401k. You could get into this new plan called a 408M3 or something like that, which basically is saying that you could invest your 401k in the coins. And I tried to explain the, the version of scams that are out there <laughs> that tried to base them on fear. Where they say, oh, you, you can't trust in the United States government. They're going to come seize your property. They All these worst case scenarios. And they're tra- trying to get people to buy something at an extraordinarily high price with huge, huge commissions. And they're really not what's best for that client at all. Yeah, and these are the times when you see a lot of highlight, high, heightened scams going on. Yep. There's a lot of fake charities out there emailing people, yep. trying to get money for Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you read your emails. If if the name doesn't look right, it's probably not your grandson trapped in Europe. Yeah. Probably a scam. We could do a whole show just on, <laughs> on things where people try to do money scams to take people's money. One of the best things to do is to be cautious about everything. To build a solid plan one step at a time so that when something goes down, you don't have to say, oh, I needed that money that I just lost. I, I will take 100 phone calls a week where I can tell people, nope. Scam, throw it away. Yeah. Versus one where I say, I wish you wouldn't have done that. I wish you had called me first. Right. Yeah, that's the, one of the worst things to get is that phone call after the fact. Right. And then it's like, that's why we plan ahead. And then we have this relationship with our clients, which I know you value, Brian, and so do I. It's, I get a great sense of accomplishment when, when I have this, the trust for people. You know, I, I like that. 
Well, it's wonderful to be able to look them in the eye and tell them what you want to do. And then they, we talk about it. They said, yeah, I think that's the direction we want to head. And then we implement it and then we track it and follow it and make sure it's working during the good days and the bad days, especially during life's big decisions, you know, like retirement to actually go out and retire. Um, that's uh, for some people, that's an easy thing to do. For some people, it's really hard. Yeah, it's a tough thing. I mean, for a lot of people, they just don't know what to do all day. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of people f- figure it out in the first two years, though. Then they wonder, how did I have any time to work with all these things I needed to do? I hear that all the time. Uh, people I know in my meeting later today is going to say to me, Alex, I don't know how this is ever working. Yeah. <laughs> I know for a fact he's going to say he does every time. <laughs> well, well, today's show is Know Your Purpose for Investing. And the reason you need to know your purpose is so you can defend where you have your money invested so that you're not second-guessing yourself and trying to make changes at the wrong time. We need to try to avoid mistakes that people are making by doing irrational decisions, emotional decisions, or listening to someone that's really not their advisor. They need to have a plan to understand what to do. These are all extremely important things you need to think about in times like we're facing right now. Yes, and you do not have to do it on your own. Absolutely. Thank you very much for a good show there, Alex. It was great to be here, Brian. And I'm glad everyone could listen to our show today. The Know Your Purpose for Investing is, it will be on our website here soon in the next week. Um, go ahead and listen to it again, but give us a call um, to talk about your exact situation. Financial planning leads to long-term good decisions for you and your family because we all want to make our money last a lifetime. We want you to win in your retirement by taking advantage of an opportunity to begin planning with us at Acres Financial Group. To schedule your free meeting with one of our team of advisors, go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. You just scroll down to schedule a meeting section and let us know you'd like to schedule that free meeting. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or you can just go ahead and give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. When you call, um, you leave a message and we'll be able to give you a call back on Monday to schedule your free in-person Zoom or a phone meeting with one of our team of advisors. Start planning for your retirement now. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833-946-7384. Thank you for listening. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and we want you to be winning in retirement. You've been listening to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group. Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group is a registered representative offering securities through Kalos Capital Incorporated and investment advisory services through Kalos Management Incorporated. Akers Financial Group is not an affiliate or subsidiary of Kalos Capital or Kalos Management and does not provide tax and legal services. Advice given on winning in retirement is general in nature, and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, or tax accountant before investing. Be sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment.